So here's problem number one from the 2019 AP Calculus A, B, and B, C for your response questions. Calculator question here, and this is the problem about fish entering and leaving the lake. So we're told that fish enter a lake at a rate modeled by E of T. Fish leave the lake at a rate modeled by L of T. They tell us E of T and L of T both measure in fish per hour. T is measured in hours since midnight. So part A asks us how many fish enter the lake over the five hour period from midnight to 5 a.m. Give your answer to the nearest whole number. So since this is the rate at which fish are entering the lake, the total number of fish that enter from time zero to time five is gonna be determined by integrating that rate of change across the interval from zero to five. So if you do that integral, you can throw it into the calculator here, just make sure you're in radian mode. It does say that we're allowed to give the answer to the nearest whole number here. A lot of, most of the time we want to go three digits of accuracy. It doesn't really make sense to say 0.47 fish or something like that. So we have 153 fish uh, over the course of that five-hour stretch from time zero to time five. I double-check the units when I do calculations like this. So this is measured in fish per hour. This differential does have units associated with it. It has the same units as T is going to have. So when I do a product of fish per hour and hours, the units in the denominator and the units here being the same are going to cancel and that does leave me with units of fish for my end result. Part B asks for the average number of fish that leave the lake per hour over the five hour period from midnight to 5 a.m. So again we're dealing with the time frame from time zero to time five. So this is essentially asking what the average value of L of T is on the interval from zero to five. It only pertains to the fish that leave, so we don't need to involve E of T here, just like we didn't involve L of T back in part A. If you think about the units of this average value of a function calculation, which is what you see I've written out right here, I've got 1 over 5 minus 0. Now, now 5 and 0 are time, so this is going to have units of 1 over time, 1 over hours. Uh, L of T has units of fish per hour, and then just like we talked about in part A, DT has units of hours. So if I have 1 over hours here and hours here and all of these units are multiplied together, I'm going to have those units cancel and my net result is measured in fish per hour. And reread that question. Does it make sense for your final answer to have units of fish per hour if you're trying to find the average number of fish that leave the lake per hour? It basically says that within the question that we're asked. So we are doing the right calculation here. Once again, calculator's in play. You can toss that in. So you see my TI-83 input here, and you end up with 6.059 fish per hour. Didn't say anything about rounding to the nearest whole number here. So we would want to go with the AP standard of going three digits beyond the decimal before we cut anything off or round anything off. Part C says, okay, now consider the time interval from 0 to 8. At what time t within that interval is the number of fish in the lake the greatest? Justify your answer. So what I thought to do here, and you've probably done something similar to this in other problems that you've looked at, you have competing rates of change. The rate that fish are entering, the rate that fish are leaving. I think it's convenient to have a new function defined that represents the net rate of change. So I define my net rate of change function here, n of t, to be the rate that fish enter minus the rate that fish leave. So the logic behind this is if E of T is bigger than L of T, then I'm gonna have the number of fish in the lake rising because when this difference is positive, I'm looking at a positive net rate of change. Number of fish in the lake going up over an interval of time where that's happening. If the opposite is true, if E of T minus L of T turns out to be negative, that means L of T is bigger than E of T, and that means that the number of fish in the pond is decreasing over any interval where that's true. So I actually graphed this net rate of change function. I did shrink the viewing window uh, to only have the values of T or values of X range from 0 to 8. And here's what this net rate of change function looked like. So I looked at this net rate of change function, and I thought, all right, N of T, Positive, 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 zero, and then negative, 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 negative. So based on what we just said a few minutes ago, and I have it all kind of laid out within my, my written solution here as well, the number of fish in the pond is, or in the lake, is rising from time zero to this time right here, where n of t is equal to zero. 
and that time is 6.204, if I round that to three digits beyond the decimal. And then n of t is less than zero, and the number of fish in the pond is decreasing from 6.204 the rest of the way to eight. So if I have the number of fish increasing from time zero to 6.204, and then I have the number of fish decreasing from 6.204 the rest of the way to time eight, that must mean the maximum number of fish in the lake happens at time 6.204. Then the final part of this question asks, is the rate of change in the number of fish in the lake increasing or decreasing at time five? So it, it flat out says rate of change here. And then it goes on to say, is that rate of change increasing or decreasing? So we're talking about a rate of change of a rate of change here, or the derivative of a derivative. Um, so n of t back from part c is my net rate of change function. I would like to know if n of t, the net rate of change, is increasing or decreasing at time five. So I evaluated the derivative of n of t. So here's e of t minus l of t. So I evaluated the derivative of my net rate of change function at five, used the ti-83 to do that. I ended up with negative 10.7 units. There would be fish per hour per hour, right? So this was already measured in fish per hour. When I take the derivative, I'm going to have that set of units divided by the units of the independent variable once again, which in this case is hours. So since that net rate of change function represents the rate of change of the number of fish in the lake and its derivative is negative at time five, I know that the rate of change is decreasing at time five.